right, so I'm a member of the Computer Science and Mathematics Division and the National Center for Computational Science, which runs the OLCF, the Oak Ridge Leadership Computing Facility. Uh, quick, I'm gonna skip a lot of the introduction because Scott did a good job. Um, and then I'm gonna tell you about performance tools available on Titan um, and tips for using these things and then give you a, a list of resources where you can find additional information. So I'm sure you've seen this earlier in the week based on slides I've looked at. Uh, Titan is a big Cray XK7 with over 18,688 nodes. It has GPUs in every node. It has a Gemini interconnect, interconnect which is specific to Cray's. Uh, we have a really, really big spider file system which is one of or is the largest luster installation in the world. Um, that's the only file system available to applications on uh, compute nodes. So uh, all performance data will end up on this. Um, and then there's also a uh, tape backup storage called the high performance storage system. So on Titan, we have uh, lots of different programming models. Um, in addition to having four uh, compilers, GNU, Intel, PGI, and Cray, we support pure MPI, hybrid MPI plus OpenMP, hybrid MPI plus pthreads, and then all of the above plus the GPUs. So uh, what's this mean? Um, it means that all of our tools have to support all of these things. Uh, and so the tools have to be fairly well featured to, to support all that. And uh, on the GPU programming side, we also support things like high-level directives, uh, things such as OpenACC or OpenHMQP, which is a CAPS Enterprises thing that uh, gives you something called codelets. Um, and then also low-level GPU programming in CUDA, OpenCL, and PGI Fortran. Scott covered this, but the one thing I want to uh, note is in addition to things that do profiling and tracing, uh, there are tools, mostly or uh, research oriented, that do static analysis of source code that may be able to do some, some uh, high level analysis to, to at least give you an insight where your uh, problematic areas might be uh, just to run it on the source code itself. Uh, it can tell you things like uh, data access patterns or communication patterns that, that may be problematic. And um, if you need uh, more information on, on those types of tools, I can give you pointers. Uh, we have one on Titan. Uh, that is specific to GPU applications. Um, the software is no longer being supported by OLCF, but it may still work, so we would have to try it to, to see. Um, as, as Scott mentioned, uh, you can have profilers that mostly do sampling, and uh, to get to the overhead question, these have really low overhead, and you know if you're gonna start with performance analysis, you should always start with, with profiling. Um, and then there's tracing. Um, that give you events and, and time spent in, in pretty fairly high grain or high detail. And this also comes with higher overhead. We'll restate kind of what Scott already said. Uh, the first thing to do in performance analysis is get rid of all your debugs. So let, let David tell you how to do that later. Um, but if you start with bugs, your performance results are, are useless. So, so get rid of your bugs first. You look at your source code, understand what it's doing, generate hypotheses about what could be potential performance bottlenecks in your code. Look at the compute, memory, disk, network, all this kind of stuff. And again, here's where static analysis tools can, can sometimes help. And then you can go into hypothesis testing mode, which is let's, let's apply a profiler and see if my, my ideas of where my bottlenecks maybe actually match what the tool is telling me it is. Um, the interesting cases are often when it doesn't match what you expected, but it guides your focus for further inspection. Um, and if you wanna do you know, fine-grained inspection, then you can use tracing tools such as Tau to say, I wanna look at this particular routine and specific things like hardware performance counter uh, information on specific routines. And you can also look at communication this whole time. Okay, <laughs> so uh, performance tools available on Titan. Um, we have uh, the NVIDIA profiling tools. This is for single node, uh, code performance on, on uh, GPU apps. Uh, CrayPat, which is the performance analysis toolkit from Cray. Um, uh, so all, to explain this graph a little bit, uh, all of our tools, because it is a GPU-based system, support GPUs. Um, and then these last five here are, uh, are parallel tools, such that they allow you to run across multiple nodes. Um, the 
blue ones in blue are things that are currently available and you can just go out and use right now. Um, the ones in the yellow are things that I've been working with the developers to make available on Titan and they will be there very soon. Um, uh, HPC Toolkit may actually be there later today. So the rest of the time I'm gonna uh, spend some time talking briefly about each one of the tools that's in that chart and then uh, and then I'm gonna talk about some general tips for how you can modify things to, to work with the performance tools. Um, so to run the NVIDIA profiler, it's really easy. Um, you basically set a couple environment variables and then just run your application and it'll spit out some text files that have profiling information. Um, with the appropriate options, you can also um, run the MVProf tool, which is available. Um, so on Titan, uh, if you haven't already heard this from last week, uh, we use modules. And so everything is available as a module. If you want to know what's available, we say module avail, and it tells you the whole entire list of modules that we have. So to use this, um, module load CUDA toolkit, um, and it spits out the text files at least spit out information like this. So this is running on the sorting networks uh, example from the CUDA SDK and there's, it identifies four kernels and then we're looking at actual GPU hardware counters inside this. And so it's telling you that you're, you're using cycles in each of these kernels and for each of five invocations, you know, the average was, was you know, some number and then the min and the max. Um, and then you can look at things like warps if you're familiar with, with uh, GPU programming. Um, user manual is available uh, from NVIDIA um, and there's a, a little bit of documentation on the Titan site. Uh, the next tool I'll talk about is Crape Hat. Um, again, it's fairly, um, fairly simple setup. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, so the thing in the blue box here, this is things that you would actually have to run in your job scripts. Everything else is kind of outside of your job scripts. Uh, so we have some setup. Uh, so in Craypat, you actually have to rebuild um, your uh, application. You don't have to modify the source, but you have to keep around the object files uh, for later so that it can rebuild it and link in all its, its uh, profiling libraries and tracing libraries. Uh, so basically what we do is, is we, we set up our make file to do that, we rebuild, uh, and then we run Pat Build, which is their, their rebuilder, um, and you tell it to use uh, APA, which is Automatic Performance, performance Analysis. What Craypat does is it, um, it's decided that you know, this is a common set of performance analysis strategies that we think will be the most useful for finding out what, what further analysis you can do. So basically, it'll, it'll build your application to measure those things. You run it once, you use the results of that, and then you feed it back into the tool, uh, build it again, run it again to, to focus in on where the actual problems are that you found in the first run. So that's what I'm showing in the blue box is the run, uh, analyze the first result with Pat report, uh, build again, run again, and then analyze again. And there's also a vis uh, visualization tool called Apprentice 2 uh, that can show you this stuff in a, in a nicer format than this, but this is basically, this is the IRS Sequoia benchmark. Um, and so the profile shows that, you know, a lot of time is spent in Maine and this, uh, what is it, R Matmult 3. Um, I'm using similar applications across tools just to see how, how well they uh, match each other as far as what they find. Uh, again, um, this documentation is available on the OLCF site. Uh, Al's gonna talk about Tau. Again, fairly, fairly simple setup. What you really need to do is basically replace uh, the standard compilers with compiler wrapper scripts. So you can, if your makefile is set up to, to handle this type of thing and uses the, the standard uh, variables for CC for C compiler, or, uh, F90 for Fortran 90 compiler, then you can just you know, export the Tau scripts and, and, and replace those. Uh, and then you rebuild and you run, um, uh, you can track things like messages uh, in MPI. If you turn that on, um, you can track the communication ranks that are communicating so that you have a nice display. Uh, uh, Al may show this actually a little bit later. Um, uh, Tau works in, in two modes, both tracing and profiling modes, so you can say whether you want traces or, or profiles. Um, uh, you do your run with app run, 
Um, if you're running in parallel, you need to merge all the independent process uh, profiles together. And then if you use, uh, this is actually jump shot, showing a, a, a tau trace of a very stupid MP, uh, MPI application that I call dummy MPI. That's a master worker where every, every uh, MPI process but, the, but rank zero is sending messages to rank zero. And so this, you can see uh, bad scaling behavior as, as all the messages are sent up. So there's a lot of activity up here that's rank zero. Uh, and then everyone else is kind of waiting so it's, it, it's good at showing uh, and at tracing a clear pattern. Uh, again, user manual information down below. Uh, we also have uh, Vampire Trace and Vampire. Um, again, this is similar to, to Tau. You basically have to replace your compilers with the compiler wrapper scripts. Um, tell it what type of instrumentation you want to use. So Vampire Trace can use compiler-based instrumentation. So all compilers can say, instrument every function with start and stop, essentially. Um, and you can either use that, which is the default on Titan, or you can actually use Tau, uh, which does something a lot smarter and will be a lot less overhead. I would suggest using Tau, um, and I'm going to work to make sure that that's the default in the future on Titan. Uh, you rebuild the application, um, uh, set some stuff up, uh, tell it to use unique file names for each of the traces, um, Give it a, a location on Luster for your for your traces to be written, uh, run it, and then afterwards you can uh, use the visualizer. So this is the same dummy MPI application, you know, different different information or same information, just different display. Uh, here's all the messages going up to the rank, and everyone's waiting until this point to do a barrier. Um, uh, we have manuals on the Titan OLCF site and. Uh, for both Vampire and Vampire Trace. So Vampire is the client that you run. And actually, at, at Oak Ridge, we have um, the ability to do a parallel visualization using Vampire. So basically, you can actually launch a job to do an efficient uh, trace visualization. Um, it's, it's not as good to run Vampire on a single machine with a large trace, because your, your machine will get bogged down. We have HPC Toolkit soon. I've been using it. Um, I'm going to make it available. This is back to the IRS benchmark. Um, uh, this one, so with HPC Toolkit, all you have to do is link with it. You don't have to change your compilers. Um, so I've changed my, my link uh, make file variable to say HPC link, and then the name of the, the compile. Uh, rebuild. Uh, HPC struct is, is something you need to run to basically analyze your, your application executable to figure out where functions are, et cetera, so that you can map performance data back to the source code. Um, we can do some setup, tell it where to put its output file. Uh, HPC Toolkit is nice because it allows you to say, I want to sample only 10% of my processes, not everybody. Uh, and this is, at scale, this is really important. Um, you can see a lot of uh, useful information by just looking at a small uh, subset of your processes. Uh, I wouldn't suggest going all the way down to four, as IBM has done, but, but maybe you know, spreading out to 10%. Once you're done running, uh, you can basically uh, run uh, HPC Prof MPI, which is an MPI job that combines all the, the profiles together in, in a way that makes it usable for the viewer or viewers. So HPC Viewer lets you look at profile data, and HPC Tracer allows you to look at the time-based uh, profiles. That it looks very similar to what you would see in something like Vampire, only it, the, the data is actually just coming from sampling, which is much lower overhead. Um, the, because it's not made available on Titan yet, the documentation I list here comes from, from John's group, um, but we will have that on the Titan site as well soon. Um, Scott mentioned Open Speech Shop. That's another one that I've been uh, making sure is working recently. Uh, both HPC Toolkit and Open Speech Shop, uh, because GPU computing is, is relatively new, uh, before we made them available to users, we just wanted to, to make sure that the GPU support was, was fully there before we released them onto, onto the general public. And that's come about really uh, pretty recently. Um, so here, OpenSpeedShop is another one that's uh, basically you replace your link line, uh, not your compile line. Uh, so there's a tool called OSS Link that you 
tell it uh, what you want to collect. Uh, you pass minus C and then the name of the collector. There's collectors such as uh, PC sampling, uh, IO tracing, uh, hardware counters, hardware counter time. Uh, I'll let you look at the actual tool documentation. But there's a lot of different information you can collect. It does both profiling and tracing. It can give you things like the MPI messages and sizes and things like that. So down here, HPC Toolkit found essentially the same bottleneck as Craypat in the profiles. And, and here, this same routine RMAT Molt 3 is identified by OpenSpeechUp. So, so these, you know, it's different displays, and you kind of have to figure out how they're actually displaying it. But uh, profile experiments are a good way to find bottleneck routines as a first starting point. And then uh, the viewer is called uh, OpenSS, but you can also look at a text file output that's generated when you run this. Uh, documentation is from OpenSpeedShop, and again, it will be made available on OLCF Titan site very soon. <coughs> so in general, uh, on Titan, there's basically four, four ways you integrate performance tools. You can do source instrumentation. This is putting in explicit start and stop uh, calls in your code to say this is what I want to measure. Um, uh, then Tau and Vampire Trace uh, support compiler wrapping. Uh, linker wrapping is used by Pat, HPC Toolkit, and Open Speed Shop. And then execution wrapping, where you're basically just putting something in front of your executable on the app run line, uh, is supported by NVIDIA, Tau, HPC Toolkit, and Open Speed Shop. Uh, for the GPU codes on Titan, um, you can often use the execution wrapping. You don't actually have to go to the link. So for the ones that offer multiple methods, for GPU code, execution wrapping is typically what you'll use. Um, but to, to help support this um, in make files, uh, you're based, I mean, most of these tools are doing very similar things. If you're doing compiler wrapping, you stick the tool compiler script in front of your regular compiler. Uh, if you're putting linker wrapping, you do linker in front of the normal linker. Um, so it would be advisable to think about this uh, up front uh, or, uh, or add it into your existing make files to support, um, to support tools. So uh, one, one tip is you can actually um, use uh, separate directories to hold the object files that are built by different tools. This allows you to have multiple builds of the same application with separate tools, and they won't they won't overwrite each other. So you can do, uh, these are things that are available in GNU's version of Make, which most people tend to use on Titan. Um, so you can say, you know, I have my regular objects, which are basically generated from sources, and then I can uh, create a, a directory for tiles objects that are gonna be stuck in a separate uh, directory, and I'm gonna use those later to, to build the tile version. Um, you really need debug information to get good information out of, out of the performance tools. That does not mean you can't turn on optimization. In fact, John will tell you that you should turn on optimization because otherwise you're not gonna get good information. Um, and so do that. And here are some options for doing that on the compilers available on Titan. Uh, you can create specific targets for your uh, executables that are built with the tools. So in a lot of mine, I have a make tools target, which will build for all the tools. Um, and then I have individual ones for, for example, build for HPC toolkit or build for tile. Down below are the actual the build lines. That, so uh, the bottom, I'm showing the use of, of um, using the tile objects to actually build the tile executable. Um, and this is all something that you can uh, refer back to later. Uh, performance data on Tighten it. As I mentioned earlier, it must be going to uh, Lester. So uh, um, one thing to note is there's a 14-day uh, storage purge. So if you haven't touched a file in 14 days, it will be, will be deleted. So um, the other problem with, with performance data is it can go cr grow quite large uh, on large systems. And your home area only has a uh, 10 gigabyte quota. So you're basically left with uh, get it off soon, or put it on long-term storage, which you have a lot, a lot more space, but even for uh, long-running applications where you're doing things like tracing, even, even two terabytes can, can, can come into play with something like Vampire Trace. Um, uh, 
there are special commands that are used to access this tape storage service. Um, and then if you want to just get your data off Titan before it's deleted, they suggest using the data transfer nodes, which are dtn.ccs.ornl.gov, and there's links for how to use these things. What I would suggest is for every job you run on Titan, create a data directory, um, and if you're using a tool, you know, make it tool specific. So basically, uh, Titan uses PBS, so PBS job ID is a unique ID for every job you run, and you can create something in your Lustre area, which is temp work user, um, for each app and run. Uh, and then uh, to help support tools, uh, the default <coughs> striping on, on Titan says every file will be written to two, two nodes. Um, well, when you're writing small traces or a file per every process, that's not necessarily what you want to do. So you can turn off the default and say, I want to write every trace file to one node. Uh, and you'll actually see a market improvement in, in the run times of your, your performance runs. And then finally, uh, if you're not going to get data off in a timely fashion, I would suggest adding a backup to the end of every job script. Uh, here's some, an example of how to do that. Uh, resources for additional information. Uh, the, tile, the Titan user guide, uh, I give the link. Um, within that one page thing, uh, there is a subsection on debugging and performance tools, which you can get directly to using that second link. Uh, if you're interested in what performance counters are available in Titan, you can find that out from GPU by um, looking at Cray's uh, PAT project, which you get by a module of perf tools. And then you can use these man, uh, man pages to see what's available uh, in general and on the K20 GPU. Um, for CPUs, as Scott mentioned, you have to look at it in a batch job. So you SSH in, and then uh, actually the login nodes have the same hardware as compute nodes. So you can just run Pappy Avail right on the login nodes. Um, uh, people at the OLCF, uh, for those of you who have Insight projects allocations on Titan, uh, we have liaisons, you should use them. They are there to help you both port your code, but also to, to help you with things like using performance and debugging tools. Um, if you have software system troubleshooting issues, please send emails to, to the helpline. Um, and if you have specific tools advice, you can, you can ask me and I will probably forward your request back to the tool developers themselves. And uh, a lot of my slides say set up X11 forwarding. Um, Unless you're on Internet 2, that doesn't work so great. Uh, if you are on Internet 2, you can use VNC, and it's really fast, and I can tell you how to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, you plan to be around here? I, I will be around here.